Hey guys, welcome to Champagne Conversations. I'm Grant Mitt. My name is Cam Jackson. And this is a conversation about success, branding, and how to just simply win at life. And Champagne is the drink of champions. Anytime you win a championship, you celebrate something in life, you succeed, you drink champagne. So this is a conversation about success and really how to help everyone win. Okay, so Cam, so first let's kind of talk about how did this even come about? Like what made us wanted to start champagne conversations? So what, we were at the post oak. Well, this is long overdue to, to say the least. Like we've right. always, we've been doing a lot of, he has a podcast, I had a podcast with Hoop. So we've always kind of been on, been on this mix and with business and we like, teaching people and giving people kind of like bits and pieces of our story. Yeah. So this kind of was long overdue. So how it happened is what? We are in here at the post oak. Yeah. Chilling. They bring Champa Mini. Uh, what? We're shooting, so we're shooting content. Yeah, we're shooting content. We meet at the post oak, shooting content. Some complimentary champagne comes to the door. Yeah, so so basically, so I stay here quite a bit for because yeah. I come in town. You live here. You live yeah, in yeah. Houston. So I was here for work and I've been here enough times that that I became friendly with them. And so suddenly they just brought us a bottle of champagne, just saying, welcome to the hotel. Yeah. Thank you, all that good stuff. We're like, what, what if we had a, a YouTube either channel or maybe a series, Some, something, something just called Champagne Conversations. Because every time you drink champagne, something good just happened. When you made some money, something, something. You close a deal, right, you, right, you, right. something good happened with the, the business or the company or whatever the case may be. So yeah, absolutely. And, and to kind of follow up on that, like, I kind of want to talk about why it's so important to to make money and to be successful in your 20s, because a lot of people, they spend their 20s partying their life away, um, just kind of not worrying, kind of pushing life to the side until mm -hmm. they get older and mm -hmm. become an adult mm -hmm. and they, until they have a family. And then right. like we've noticed a lot of people we've grown up with, they get to their late 20s or maybe even 30s. And it's kind of like a someone slaps yeah, them in the face mm -hmm. and it's a wake up call. Mm -hmm. So w what would you say just kind of start off that? that really helps you be successful early on in your 20s honestly for me it was like seeing my grandparents at a young age like when i was young seeing my grandparents be their own bosses and make money and i think that that had like a really big just toll on everything i saw because yeah. even then like when i was younger i used to try to sell things in my grandpa's barbershops to make money so i was making money young and yeah. i was seeing that early on and so it's kind of just in me like when I then when I got 20 I was like okay now I have a little bit more I would say stability and kind of like you know when you get older your parents kind of let you give you more leeway and they're like okay you could do more things so I can take more leaps and I can fail a little bit more and I can learn a little bit more so I really was like starting to get the kind of just the feeling of man I want to do my own thing I want to make money because I wanted this life that I envisioned and I knew the only way to get there is like you know to make some money and figure it out so that's kind of what's sparking in me, but everyone's different, man. You know, I know the kind of life I want to live and like where I wanted to take things, but everything's relevant. You know, some people come from nothing and want everything and some people come from everything and then they end up with nothing. So it really just depends. Yeah, absolutely. And, and what do you think is, is important as far as branding and, and putting yourself out there? Because especially to one thing that I noticed and one of the common questions that people ask me mm -hmm. is, you know, how do you approach someone that's 10 times more successful, 20 years older than you? And you're 20, 23 years old, 21 years old. You just got a new business, or you're a new salesperson at a company. Mm -hmm. How do you have the credibility to 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 be able to compete and to to succeed? What has kind of worked for you? Honestly, just me getting off my ass and then trying something, right? Yeah. So like, instead of you, for instance, like when I was getting started, and I would say, um, you know, I wanted to let's say I wanted to get into real estate. Well. I've, I've already gotten to the point where I got off my ass and either I read the books or I got the information and I got the knowledge to where I can at least go to this person and give them a plan of action and say, hey, I need this. I'm going to do this, 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 and this, and this. I've researched this and I've done this. I've done this, right? So you already have something you've done. So to say, okay, I can, I can work with you. Right. It's always worse when somebody comes up and they're like telling you about all the things they want to do. And it's like, okay, what steps have you taken to get there? And they're like, nothing. They're like, right. I'm looking for you to like people don't like that yeah. it's like do something and then start figuring it out yourself and then that's when you meet that person you already have like some some motion you already got some motion so now an object stays in motion stays in motion once yeah. the right person comes along yeah you know you know what's interesting is uh, the best entrepreneurs everyone i know mm -hmm. that has been wildly successful they're multi-millionaires they're billionaires they take immediate action with whatever they want and so for example 
one of my favorite sayings is business plans for people who don't start businesses. Yeah. And so in there, I took an entrepreneur class in, in school and they taught you how to make a business plan, not how to execute the business. That's so funny. And I have a company that revenue well over, I mean, we did almost 20 million in sales last year and I've never had a business plan. I didn't have time to it. I just thought about what is step one, what I need to Dude. do. Yeah, I, 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 I didn't, I agree a hundred percent on that because everyone talks about business plan, business plan. That's the first thing you need to do, but it's like, I didn't use a business plan. I kind of just like got started and was like, let me figure it out. And you know, what's interesting is the biggest question that people say, like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. You know, a business mm -hmm. plan, but how the hell do you know what to do? Mm -hmm. And one thing that I noticed is one, if you look at the entire puzzle, you don't know how to do step six or step seven or step mm -hmm. eight or whatever the case may be, but what great entrepreneurs do is they kind of just focus on step one. So let's just say the basics is how do you start a business? Well, you can ask 10 of the smartest people that you know, eventually you might get the answer. Let's say they even didn't know. Did you Google it? Mm -hmm. Did you look for it on YouTube? Did you do your own research? And each level you kind of start figuring things out or you come across and meet people who do. Yeah, exactly. And, and you, can, you can add that to to your resume and to your, your knowledge base so you can apply it to your business and be successful. What do you say to somebody that can't find their first step and they're like, Grant, I've, I've, I've listened to all the podcasts, I've read all the books, I've, I've watched all the gurus and I just don't know where to start. Like, what would you say to that kind of person? Well, that's the problem, they just gotta start. So mm -hmm. the best thing I would say is people get caught up and they think that they have to just be wildly passionate mm -hmm. about what they do. And oddly, I found that many times people that I've known or met that their work is their full life passion, it kind of diminishes their passions. Because think about if you know, you're know you a college coach, whatever the case may be, and you loved football, you loved baseball, but now all you do is 24 seven away from your family is your full life is just that sport. When you're on your off day, do you want to do more football? No, you probably want to relax. You want to go kick play some house. golf, you know, kick at the house, go see friends. And so instead, I think it's more concerned. It's like, do what creates the lifestyle you want and take as much action as possible. So if you have five ideas, start with the one that makes the most sense. Start today, mess it up, figure it out, do something different. But if it's your six months versus my six months and you're, you're planning to beat me and you want to beat me, you need to go way faster than I ever could and, and learn at a much quicker rate compared to me just waiting for this perfect opportunity, this perfect situation. Exactly. Exactly. And, and, and that's why is like the books and all that stuff, it's just potential power. It's not going to suddenly make you rich unless you utilize that information. Mm -hmm. Actually, okay. yeah. Exactly. And what would you say as far as just relationships? And I'm not even necessarily only talking about like who you're dating girl wise, mm -hmm. whatever the case may be, but you know, we grow up, uh, it's, it's unfortunate, but you grow up with so many different people you play sports with and your friends with, and maybe they don't have the same interests and life happens and people kind of part ways mm -hmm, or whatever. Mm -hmm. How important is it to get rid of toxic people? And what, what have you kind of experienced of people coming in and out of your lives over the last five, six years? So funny because that's such a, that's something that plays a part in your life a lot and you don't even really notice it. So like when I think of that, like when you just said that, I thought back to like high school and I really didn't care about who I was around and like there are certain people that you knew that you shouldn't be around that negative energy and there's people that aren't doing what you want to be doing but like when you're so young like that you're just like you know you're just like you just think that this is just what it is it's like as of the recent years I've seen like I'll go back and I'll reflect and I'll be like man at this time this person I would have never hung out with them again like I wish I knew I knew what I knew now and then back then I was like man I would have fucking I would have never hung out with that person again I would have distance myself from them immediately because of you know the impact they had on my life whether it was negative or positive yeah so at this point it's not even like what value do you bring it's definitely what value do you bring but a lot of times it's like i want to keep somebody positive around me more than negative that's it so supportive time. that's in your corner yeah you need somebody in your corner at all times because even even if they're not if they don't have more in it because to me it's not like i'm looking at someone like a transaction mm -hmm. but is this person really rooting for me like i'm rooting for them like perfect example is when we were talking this is like a year ago we're talking me and Gurner are talking and he's telling me his goals on social media i'm telling him mine and like a regular person would have thought it was crazy like, we were like yeah man we want to get a hundred thousand 
we had like what, like twenty thousand then. We were like, man, we're yeah. trying to get a hundred thousand in a couple months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, you know, I'm like, shit, I think it can happen in a couple of days. You like, shit, now I'm, I'm me too. And we started and strategizing. Like, we started strategizing how to do it. And it's like we were in each other's corner and we were able to feed off each other right. so easy. But if you have somebody that that was on the op- opposite end of that phone call saying, Man, I want to get a hundred thousand followers and they're like, and eh, you have twenty, like it was so hard for you to get twenty maybe not two months, they probably take you like two years. People like that, you gotta you're not they saying what go. I want you to hear. Not even just because you're just like saying what I want to hear, but it's just like at the same time you need to you need to believe in me like I believe in you. And and, and not that we're just gonna do something that's unrealistic right, or right, we're just right, saying right. shit, but it, it's like no it can't happen. All right, and, what and if what happen. if we adjust this? What if we start mm-hmm. doing it this way? Mm-hmm. And, and really, really important thing. And you know what I noticed is it's really easy to meet really high quality people when you live you go eat and you surround yourself in yep. places that those people go and it's yep. really easy to meet and be around really bad negative people when you live and surround yourself with bad you know bad people and bad environments and bad parts of wherever you live and um, and you know the, the the best thing that i think i ever did was when i was sleeping on my mom's couch and i was broke and i was down and out that whole year i got a sales job and i finally started making good money and i saved up my goal was to go live in the nicest high rise in downtown mm-hmm. houston and i remember each time it was two times in a row that in the next one was on post oak in houston right down the mm-hmm. street from here hanover boulevard place beautiful place yep, yep. travis nice scott place, lived nice at the one. penthouse there was everyone was super successful there's ferraris everywhere it, i didn't even really network but each time I was like, uh, this is like $500 more than I want to spend. And each time I more than doubled or tripled my income because I was in such a peaceful, harmonious environment that was around winners. I wasn't, I wasn't getting woken up in the middle of the night by screaming people, yelling, ratchet craziness. It was successful, positive people. And so I went into that environment and instantaneously had to elevate just to be a normal person. Leveled up, right just off that experience yeah it's right huge. yeah just off the experience and so i i think it's important that in your 20s is positioning and proximity is probably the most important thing mm-hmm. when it when it talks to like the actual true chances of you being successful if you go hang out with five people who are who are unbelievably successful in their careers they have great friend groups you're probably going to be the sixth dude you're not lying it's so funny when you just said that uh, hanging around like close proximity being in the wrong place at the wrong time is that exactly right so, if you're around the right people in your you know you could be around the right people and you meet somebody and that person changes your life or you can be around the wrong people like me for instance i'm in i'm in i'm in, I'm in high school at this time i'm about to i'm committed to liberty at this time right, right so i got right. a full d1 scholarship i'm going to school for free yeah all i got to do is graduate i got like one more month of school all i got to do is graduate not even we got graduation the next day this is like the last week of school all i got to do is graduate get my paper now I'm, now i'm in school d1 going to school for free i'm hanging out with a jackass and two other jackasses um i'm hanging out with some people that didn't have my best interests we're riding around we get pulled over there's weed in the car he doesn't claim it now we're all arrested oh, yeah. and now i got a i got a full ride scholarship i'm about to go to school graduation to get my diploma was the next day i couldn't walk into graduation oh, my God. had to call up my, my coaches and was like look man this is what happened blah 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 but that's all i say that to say being around the wrong people at the wrong time it could yeah. fu- it could change the whole it could alter everything of your life a dynamic and you know what's interesting is like you know, being around the right people in the right environments mm-hmm. too it's not always because you need to meet the right person mm-hmm. it's just if you sit in first class one time you're gonna think exactly. how do i stay in first class yeah, if you I don't go be in the back again you like, like <laughs> i don't want to walk back there again <laughs> you stay in a five-star hotel or even yeah. let's say it's like well grant i have no money i'm a broke college kid yeah. or i come from nothing and and for example, when I lived in Brooklyn, New York, I lived in a, it felt like a two by four with, well, with four or five of my, uh, my different teammates, oh, depending yeah, on the no, time. Tell me about that. So what I would do is I would get on the subway, which was five bucks, whatever it was. And I would go all the way to Fifth Avenue by Trump Tower, by the Plaza Hotel, by Central Park. And I would just go out and just go get a coffee, go get a water, go get something just to be in an environment that makes me kind of go, how do I get out of this situation? Mm-hmm. How do I be someone that's staying at this hotel? How do I be in these environments and it's just a normal Tuesday? And when I started thinking like that, that's when I started becoming the person that it would take 
to actually be able to produce stuff like that so i didn't mm -hmm. have to live you know the life that i was currently living in that was like like for me that was like when i was living in baton rouge louisiana and you know no diss to louisiana or baton rouge at all but houston and baton rouge are so different right so it's like in baton rouge i have my house and i loved it and but the city's different you know it's different sounds it's different views you know and i moved out to houston it's like when i'm waking up in the morning and i'm seeing the city from my balcony i'm like I, I gotta go get it like you're seeing all of these balconies and you're seeing all these buildings and ferraris from your from your balcony and you're just like you're just seeing more and you just want to be more yeah so for me it was like when i came to houston and i was like seeing these things and i was feeling i was like feeling like i was getting back to myself and i was like oh yeah i'm back in the area i'm back with you know people were doing it people were making it happen so yeah that's definitely uh your surroundings yeah it makes you it makes you think bigger and it and it makes you have a different perspective because because all it needs yeah. is you need like a seed you need a thought to kind of start changing your situation and, and and really start making something happen yeah I agree. but to be honest how i knew i was going to be successful was like I always knew I had influence on people. So like at a very, very young age, like my teachers always told my parents, like not like really on the class clown, kind of on a class clown, but like they were like, he distracts the whole class. They're like, mm -hmm. everyone tunes into him, buys in. Like I've been doing that so young. So like at those times, I always knew I was like, man, people follow me for a reason. Like yeah. I was like a little ass kid doing whatever I wanted to. So I was like, yeah. people are gonna follow me. I'm riding around in Corvettes and I'm like, three years old I'm doing stuff kids aren't doing like my grandparents and shit it was just like I was just doing all kinds of, I was just like I'm gonna I want this I'm gonna have this yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, as a little kid I remember that vividly and so yeah. the older I got just started just to kind of it just started you know with sports you know how we are with sports I mean we thought we were going to the league so we always thought we were gonna be successful yeah, in that yeah. so then once we saw like okay unsuccessful in that we we're like all right what's something else that we can like be successful in or get yeah. so I mean I feel like I was always gonna be successful it was just all about like having the right people around me and then continuing to get better in myself. Yeah. And I'm still not as successful as I'd like to be. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I'll never forget my sixth grade math teacher called my parents and was like, the problem with Grant is he can start a conversation about anything and it's distracting for the class. <laughs> it's like, like, they like that's say made, that made me build a multi-million yeah. dollar company, but she's, she's, I'm, I'm sitting in D hall or I'm, I'm getting ISS oh, yeah. and having to stay after class of doing something that can really make a difference in the world right so each kid's different but they'll say anything they'll say anything but yeah i was i always kind of knew i was going to be successful to be honest i didn't know what i was going to do like once i didn't know i was going to the league like i figured like that i wasn't that was like not the plan anymore i was like damn like what am i going to do i was if i wasn't doing this i'd be like i don't know what i'd be doing like if i didn't have like a route or just like was lazy i don't know like i'd probably be like selling cars not to say that's a bad thing to do but i mean i probably just try try to use my personality and sell cars and shit yeah i just i never really dwelled on sports yeah I didn't when, either, the though. second it ended I, I was just like let's it kind of felt free That's so good. because i i didn't have to worry or stress or hope i i and, and what's nice about the real world this is why i i didn't this like school right as much as as much as i love learning and i'm a nerd and i want to learn everything i wasn't constrained to the way that they wanted me to be if i messed up or if i succeeded it was truly just on me yeah and i didn't have to wait on anybody else to be successful mm -hmm. and i could just go out and make it happen on my own it was the most freeing feeling ever mm -hmm. so if you're an accountable hard-working person that wants to go make a life for his or, or herself you have the ability to in a life especially if you're in america or if you're in right. europe or somewhere nice and i'm glad you said that because so how we both played college sports right when i started to get into business right after college you were the same way like we got into it right after college like early 20s yeah and a big problem for a lot of my friends was that transition because how do you go from you have you're on a schedule every single day you have people telling you what to do what not to do you just know what you're supposed to be doing you know what's good you know what's bad you know you got to go to class you know you got to go to practice and then when that structure leaves your life a lot of people are like can't wait for it and i couldn't either i was like man i, I hate waking up at 5 a.m and all this nonsense but like once people don't have that structure in their lives it's hard for them to really do it for themselves and be consistent and be disciplined so like i had a ton of friends ask me like bro I, like how did you make that transition and i was like bro for me it was like i truly just put that drive of like football into just my career instead yeah, of me yeah. waking up early to go to practice and lift weights now 
I'm waking up and I'm going to rent an excavator and I'm going to my lane and I'm going to learn how to use this excavator on YouTube and I'm going to be there all day just using it. Yeah. So for me, it was just like switching that focus. But I had a lot of friends, bro, suffering from that hard. I'm talking years out of you know college, still trying to go to the league, still trying to like play these play football or still lost and not doing anything and still bullshitting around and it's like, bro. And that's because what, what's interesting is. I love sports. You love sports. I do, but, but I, don't I think I think more than anything, people love what they think mm -hmm. sports can bring them. Or, mm -hmm. for example, like let's say when they're like, "Oh, I, I'm passionate about X, whatever that thing is," they think it's gonna bring them a certain feeling or lifestyle. It's not the object itself that they're actually going after. And so, and that's what I kind of realize is, you know, I'm in solar and I'm in a few other mm -hmm. things. I never was. I was never 12 years old thinking I was gonna be the solar panel guy. And I'm passionate about solar, but at the end of the day, I know that in 10 years, I'm gonna be doing something completely different, yeah, but exactly. I'm passionate about what business can can create for my employees, my you know people who I do business with, my family, and create a life that I'm happy about, that I'm passionate about. And that brings that same feeling as someone making the NFL or NBA or being in the beauty industry or finance industry or, or, or real estate or whatever the case is, but at least they're doing something that they're trying. And it's just, you got to have some type of perseverance because it, it, I mean, if, if you're not self-motivated, you, you're just not going to make it on a big yeah, level. It just, it won't happen. Even if you're good. And, and sometimes being good is, Still don't cut it. it's the, it's the most crippling factor because you can get away with being a bullshitter. That was my problem throughout a lot because I was just always able to just to get away with just bullshitting. Like always, just like whatever it was. Right. But yeah, that's not a good way to live and it's definitely something you want to get out of for sure. What's one thing you would tell, you know, everyone asks this so cliche, but what's one thing you would tell your younger self? Like let's say like 15 years old. That you're you right. Like have hey. five minutes with them and just like tell them like, well, the well for, you buy, say. take out the biggest loan you can and buy Bitcoin. I was about to say, start Uber. Yes, yeah. <laughs> buy Bitcoin. Some Uber some but if, if it can't, if it can't be buy this like stock something like or yeah, something yeah. like crazy time machine type thing, I, I would just say that you're right. Trust your instincts. You're right yeah. the entire time. It, 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 what the teachers, the family, the friends, they don't know what they're talking about. If go be, go trust your instincts and do what you know you should do and your gut is right. Well, that's a good one. You have just enjoyed your first champagne conversation with Cam Jackson. And Grant Mitt, cheers. Some more success. Some many more. Some many more and we'll see you guys on episode number two. Make sure you like, follow, and subscribe. Cheers guys.